Let's me out. Overcast Vision. I'm Sam. We are here with Ted. Yeet. See, last time he didn't do it, and he almost got away with it, and now it's just going to stick forever. <laughs> Yeet. Uh, we have here the Browning BAR Mark III DBM. Detachable yes. box magazine. Yes, okay. So what this is, is a 308, which they also come in other calibers too, like 30-06, 300 wind mag, 273, right? I believe so, but however... This version specifically... DBM with the 10 round detachable box magazine is only available chambered in 308. Which this one is. Um, again, I have the screenshot I will overlay it here. Uh, it is chambered in specifically 308 only, all caps only. If you don't believe me, look at the picture I just superimposed over the top. However, we did run 762 through it. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. I've, yeah, 40 rounds? 40 rounds, 762 yes. by 51, old Winchester white box. No problems. And anyone can comment, but the argument or the explanation generally is that 762 NATO is lower pressure, but it ran fine. Yep. So with that being said, it is a blued, matte blued, they call it, receiver, integrated Picatinny rail on top, for your optics. Of course, you see we have a scope here, 18 inch fluted, unthreaded barrel. Again, another reason why you can get away with buying this here in Washington. Touching on that quickly, semi-auto rifles, for the vast majority of them, totally banned in Washington state. Including carts, right. building your own. There is no building your own AR loophole in this state anymore. They banned the parts too. Correct. Um, so you missed the AR train completely. I did. By the time you're into shooting and getting back into it and all that, hey, sorry, can't sell you an AR no more. So you gotta find a loophole somewhere, right? This is one of those firearms that just skate by here in Washington. Reason being, it's almost featureless. Correct. So in that, what is it, 1143, House Bill 1143, there is a feature list in there of, hey, this will classify as an A. Their words, assault weapons, and if it meets at least two of those requirements, she's done. Correct. The only one that this does have is the 10 round detachable box magazine. Box magazine. make 10 rounders for this guy, correct? Correct. Uh, they do have five rounds for those states where hunting regulations only allow you to carry five rounds. But no more than 10. Correct. Uh, so for you guys out there that like running 20, 25 round PMAGs near your air 10s, not for you. And to my knowledge, your only choice is browning for those magazines. They are proprietary. And Expensive too, correct? Quite expensive, <laughs> yeah. Uh, MSRP, I believe it's around 120, 110 bucks. And you only get one in the box. Yes, you do. <laughs> so that being said, that is the only evil feature this rifle has is a detachable magazine. Correct. If it had anything else, such as a threaded barrel, uh, pistol grip, detached from the stock, this is a traditional hunting stock. Fore grip, barrel shroud, all those things are out. And I mean barrel shroud is anything that goes over the top of this barrel. Correct. Anything. 
Why did you choose this rifle? So being that uh, this is my first high-powered semi-automatic rifle, mm -hmm. Um, I want semi-automatic so that I have a quick follow-up shot. I'm not a tactical guy. I'm not looking for this to be a shit-hits-the-fan rifle. Right. However, it would serve that purpose. If, God forbid, something happens here in Washington, uh, North Korea decides to invade after all, <laughs> this is kind of the guy you're going for, isn't it? it absolutely. Uh, you know, the, the only other high-powered rifle that I have is the M1 Garand. which is a great rifle in its own. However, not something that you want to be shooting on the regular, um, not comfortable to shoot. Uh, you don't have the option of putting an optic on it unless and you're doing doesn't. things to destroy it. Right, let's go down the specs here. So you have your 18 inch barrel, thread, non-threaded, fluted. Which is also specific to the DBM. The regular uh, Mark III BAR has a 22 inch barrel in the 308 chambering. Right. Scope rail fully integrated. The scope, what are you running? Uh, so this is a Sector Optics G1. Um, I picked it up on clearance. This is usually a $1,100 scope. I managed to pick it up for less than 300. Jesus. Um, has an integrated display in it um, and you can get a thermal imager for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can also get a range finder. Those hook up via USB and you can actually see it within the scope. Right. Um, but they're also hard to find. When you sent me the link, or the, the name of it anyway, I did some research on that. And yeah, the USB port, it's proprietary. It looks yeah. like USB-C, it's its own fucking thing. Yes. Why? If you wanted to charge it, anything like that, you gotta get their cord or plug in any of their stuff. You gotta get their cord. Other than that, it is pretty cool. The display and all that, it'll do thermals. And it displays in your scope along with your normal sight in mm -hmm. your scope. So there's no. And it is an illuminated uh, dot in the center of the reticle. Like most standard LPVOs. Yep, one to eight on this one. Nice. So. If I broke it, fuck. Did you see that? Mm mm. Look out there. Hey! Not seen. One thing we did notice while we were out there, we have, you have this a little bit too far back. Correct. <laughs> um, someone's gonna say it in the comments, so I'm gonna cut you off here. Yeah, it was pretty dangerously scope eye for the both of us. It absolutely was. Um, luckily no one got hurt on that. Otherwise it would've been a pretty cool fail video. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you guys like those. Listen in matters. Oh, holy fucking shit. Another thing I noticed personally, scope's a little high. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put in some notes here on this one. You got this riser up so fucking high <laughs> that I got it way down here. Don't even have my cheek in the stock like most people do, because now I'm looking at through the base of the scope. Gonna try that. And now we're empty. You had commented out there the way we hold a rifle, totally different. Correct. You're more traditional, I'm more tactical. Uh, I fucking hate that word. Me, I keep my elbows tucked in. Where you got your scope, there is no cheek weld for me. Correct. So you will see in the B-roll footage, in the shooting videos, I'm not resting my cheek on that stock at all. Nor am I. I'm a little bit more tucked mm -hmm. than you are um, because I do, again, have a more traditional rifle hold, mm -hmm. um, keep it more in my pocket with my arm out, right. uh, which is a little bit more comfortable. But that said, again, uh, with the Picatinny rail, this was kind of the best option at the time. If I were to think about things that I might do different, I would probably, I'm considering going with more flat rings mm -hmm. instead of uh, this elevated option and again you know moving it forward that said it was still comfortable to shoulder fire right. if it was moved up you know two three notches i would have an easier time getting in there without you know being in the parallax 
One other option you could do if you decide to keep the scope set up, some sort of cheek riser, if they if you find one. Indeed. Um, a lot of snipers use that, so there's an option there. Issues on the range today. It had a few. It had a few. Again, we ran 140 rounds through it, which mm. is not the general use case for a rifle like this. Right. Um, so, jury's still out. It's also brand new out of the box. Yep. Uh, all I did with this was I did do an initial cleaning and a light oiling of it. Mm -hmm. So no break in yet. Hard to say exactly how this is going to perform over time. Uh, it did loosen up a bit. A couple of things. Uh, we had three rounds, I believe, that did slam. Jammed. That was a bit of an issue. Um, also, did not consistently lock back. No lock back. Correct. Especially as it got dirtier. Um, and then the third thing was, you had this more than I did, which I don't know, I can't explain why that was but you had more cases where it failed to fully chamber. What's wrong with this thing? Chamber's not seated. There you go. You're not in battery again. That's two out of two now? Yep. Getting dirty, baby. <laughs> Was that 180? Yeah, she's getting dirty. Every shot? Well, we got 45 rounds down the barrel. That faked me out. <laughs> I Always it. assume you that, that it's that? ready to fire. I did. That's bullshit. You're open. <laughs> Which is weird because from the shooter's point of view, it looked like it did. It did. And so it's not like an AR where you can definitely tell you're not fully in battery and hit that forward assist. You gotta manually do it one more time and mm -hmm. it'll go home. Otherwise you can't visibly see it. So you go and pull the trigger, trigger does nothing. Dead. What the fuck? One other issue that I had, I don't know if it made it on camera. I'll find out reviewing the footage. Um, once. Slamming the magazine home, or a new one, on an open bolt, slam the bolt home. No bolt release, anything like that. So that's not a huge deal if you're not expecting it. Oh shit, what the fuck? Um, pistols do that all the time too. So that being said, uh, you reminded me of something else. This does not want to seat the magazine if the bolt is closed. Correct. Uh, I did have that issue too. Like, <laughs> Definitely caught that on some long range stuff. Motherfucker.
Nope. Oh, the mag's not seated. Mag's okay. not seated. Operator here. There we go. Get some. Open the bolt, seat your magazine in, and you're good to go. Yeah. Uh, closed bolt, doesn't matter if you deload it or not, it, 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 it no likey. And the other thing which is a little bit distressing to me is you don't notice. Right. Or at least I didn't. You slam it home, it feels like it has seated. Then you go to actually pull the bolt back and it's not doing anything, it's just moving front and back and, right. and not seating around. Magazine fitment is pretty tight, so you don't end up looking like Spencer where you just sling the rifle a little bit and that magazine goes flying. <laughs> Every time! Yeah. It's either seated or it's not, and it sits there if it's not. It throws you for a loop. Um, another issue I, I figured was that awkward um, having to lock the bolt back. Yes. Uh, you almost got to do like a weird HK reach round to get all the buttons at the same time because you have to pull this back and hold it back. It doesn't just auto lock and then your bolt release bolt catches up here and you have to pull it up. For, uh, again, you're left-handed. I'm right-handed. Mm -hmm. I noticed that a little bit less. It is a little bit awkward, but I did figure out that if you are holding underneath with your left hand, you've got the bolt back with your pinky. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that bad to push it up. Right. But it is something that would take practice if you were in a hurry, needed to. Yeah, that could be a problem. Yeah, it's not a simple one. One thing they could have gone, since they went with the Ambi magazine release, they only went with the single side bolt catch bolt release. So having an Ambi one would help with that a little bit. And just the position overall is very awkward. Um, could be a little lower or a little bigger, maybe further back. I don't know, but where small it is. gripe. Uh, now that you mention it, also for me, I hate where the the trigger safety is. Mm. I I would prefer it to be in the front rather in the back. I found it a little awkward to find. Awkward to find standing up. Yes. I didn't mind it so much from the bench. Fair. Um, maybe that's just my trigger discipline or whatever. It's just an easy, boop, but. Um, that wasn't so bad for me. Uh, for those finger forward people like myself, I, I'm used to catching it on the way to the trigger. Mm -hmm. and you're not doing that with this. No, and I'm an AR guy, so I'm used to being on the thumb anyway. Fair. Um, now, you can't really actuate it with your thumb like an AR. It's a push buttons, traditional, I think Remington 870 safety on this thing. It's actually in the same spot as Remington 870, if I think, if I remember right. Could be. Um, yes, and, and again, <laughs> if if I if I had been accustomed to being a thumb guy, yeah, you could, uh, and I did a couple of times did reach over with the thumb to catch it. Again, I like to be able to be finger on the on the uh, receiver side and drop it on the way to the trigger. Can't do that here. Um, one last complaint. This thing gets hot. Very, very so, hot. Suppressing fire, bitch. Ow, fuck, that burn is fucking shit. Fuck. <laughs> Barrel shroud. <laughs> You know, Inslee, if you let us have more than one feature, that wouldn't happen. Yeah, fucking Inslee, eat my dick. Fuck. One downside of not being allowed barrel shrouds <laughs> is there's nothing protecting you from this barrel. Um, and even then, the stock here, or the handguard, whatever you want to call this, uh, retains that heat. I can feel that heat through the handguard. Yep. It really does. Which for something polymer, you would think maybe not so much, like a metal handguard would. Um, you definitely feel it still. It doesn't burn on the handguard as much as the barrel does, but it's very easy to slide into that barrel 
under recoil or whatever. And, and especially with it being a, a one-tone color yes. to it, uh, I, I did actually burn my left Hold hand. Hold Yeah, uh, just reaching around and not realizing that, that I and had done that. And that's how I did it too. I was out on a dead mag, Hold it upward in the same direction. Go to grab it. Over grab all the way around the gun. Tss, ow! Yeah. Uh, definitely caught that one on camera, so we'll see it. Uh, uh, other than that, anything we missed on this bad guy? Um, no. For 308, it's it's a really smooth gun. Uh, recoil again. You know, semi-automatics. You're not going to have as much recoil as a bolt gun, uh, but. 308, you're going to expect it to kick a little bit. I found it rather comfortable, um, especially if the sight were a little bit more out of the way. Most of the time that I was jerking was just self-preservation, making sure I didn't wind up uh, having to wear an, uh, an eye patch for the rest of the video. Um, QD gri uh, QDs yep. front and, and back uh, for a sling. We did use the Magpul... Uh, bipod on it, which was very comfortable. A lot um, of people don't like these for whatever reason. Our uh, yours didn't fail at all today. No, it didn't. Uh, the Uncle Mike uh, on it is is pretty nice. It's quick to put on, quick to take off. Um, highly accurate for first time out of the box. Yeah. Uh, I think in the video there was one point that I was shooting from the shoulder, and I, I believe nine eight or nine out of ten out of ten at 200 yards hit yeah and that was insane and even me too uh with that eye relief issue mm. and how dark that scope is so close to my face i still nailed that target no problem so kudos to you mr browning even if i were not restricted to only have this rifle i still think that it is a perfectly good choice for what I'm thinking. A great ranch gun, truck gun, you know, uh, wouldn't necessarily use it for the same thing that some folks look for ARs for, but as a hunting rifle, keep your property safe, excellent choice. We just need to tactilize it on you. No, we don't. Yes, we do. No, we'll we get don't. you a nice m lock handguard right here. Would you like to paint you on it too? When you get you an EOTech instead of this thing, whatever this thing is, EOTech, uh, we'll get you a surefire light, pressure pad, D ball, yeah. thread that muzzle, suppressor, hell yeah. I think we need more gravy. <laughs> I'm a, a bowl of gravy. <laughs> Tell me you've seen that skit. No. Oh, oh, someone has. Anyway, all right. So Someone will link to it in the comments, I imagine. Please do. Please do. Right after they hit that subscribe button, though. And the notification bell for all them cheesy transitions. <laughs> totally a serious gun channel. Thanks for watching, guys. Joe, thanks for the shirt. They're awesome. I don't know why I'm thinking for you. Yeah, I paid for it. <laughs> but it makes a good ledge for my microphone. I'm going to say that over and over again. I don't care. Bye, everybody. My left hip hurts. I don't know why. Because it's Weather. fucking winter in Washington. That's and you're getting old. Hey, shy. Hey, 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 hey. Who's talking retirement earlier? <laughs>